Okay, we find ourselves here in the explanation of the Shema. Now the truth be told, we could probably spend the rest of our lives having shiurim, having classes on the explanation of just the first word of Shema by itself, and certainly all of the other words of that opening phrase. However, for the sake of brevity and our time, we're going to say that we scratch the tip of the iceberg in the explanations that we gave in Shema. We spoke very briefly the last time about the verse that comes after, which is, Baruch Shem Kevoid Malchusay Le'olam Bo'ed. And last time that we spoke was more of a hashkafa type of discussion about that, about that word, about that line, that sentence and that verse. Uh, today I'd like to go into a little bit more depth into the explanation of these words which we say quietly after the Shema. And then after that, in Mirz Hashem, I think we're going to go into the main body of the Shema, which is the three paragraphs that we have. Again, I don't think that we'll be able to go through every single detail and point that is there, but to pull out the main ideas that we should have a little bit more kavana intention as we're davening. Can so, question, please. Is Shema is that for the Torah? Or? Shema is from the Torah, yes. It's in, the, it's in, the, it's in the, the Shema itself is in the Sefer Devarim. And we find that. And then the other three paragraphs that we're going to, to discuss are also found inside the Chumash. And which is interesting that you would ask that question because this verse that we're going to discuss right now, this is not in found in the Torah. This is based upon other sources why we say these words. We discussed briefly the last time because um, Yaakov Avinu, when he was ready to give over the blessings to his children, so he saw that the Ruach HaKadosh, the Divine Spirit, was taken away from him, and he got very nervous that perhaps his children were not really worthy of receiving the prophecies that he wanted to give. And they said to him, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad. Don't worry, our father Yisrael, Yaakov, just like you believe in one God, we also believe in one God. And at that point he, he proclaimed, Baruch Sheim Kevoy Malchuso Le'olam Vay, which means may the name of the glory of his kingdom be forever and ever. And the Gemara says that you see that these two things are placed together, Shema and this verse. So Shema we say out loud, and the Baruch Sheim we say quietly. Why do we say it quietly? And the Gemara says, because Moshe Benu didn't teach this verse to us inside of the Torah. He taught us to say Shema, but it didn't teach us to say Baruch Shem Kavoy Malchuso Le'olam Bo'ed. So since that he didn't put it into the Torah, and it doesn't say it in the Torah, we're basing it upon this story, so to speak, between Yaakov and his children, so therefore we're going to say it in a more quiet, in a more quiet way. But we're going to see today also a little, some more in, insight. Yes? Good, very good question. You're on the ball today, Mrs. Ben Morris. Okay, we're going to we're going to have to discuss that also. Okay, very good. So let's let's see a little bit about this concept over here of why one is said out loud, Shema is said out loud, and Baruch Shem Kavod Malchusay is said quietly. Now, Rav Shwa brings down. A, a very beautiful concept, a concept that we find in Mishle, in uh, the book of Proverbs, and primarily we find this explanation in the words of the Vilna Gaon. This is chapter 25 in Mishle, so we're still a couple of years away from chapter 25 in our Sunday morning shir, but you'll store this away and you'll remember, oh, okay, now everything makes sense. Okay? So it, so it says like this, What's the reason that we say Shema out loud? And we say this verse of Baruch Shem Kavod Malchusay, we say that quietly. So it's based upon the following idea, and that is, Kavod Elohim Haster Dovar. The honor of Elohim, the honor of Hashem, is to conceal a matter. How do you give honor to Hashem? we conceal certain things about His existence and about His being. Meaning the following. 
When one speaks about Hashem, you don't reveal everything all at once. The knowledge that there is of HaKadosh Baruch in this world is sacred, and it is privy to those that are worthy of receiving this knowledge of the existence of Hashem. For instance, we have something called Torah Shabbat Peh, the Oral Torah. The Oral Torah was given at Har Sinai along with the written Torah, but it was given in a different way. It was given that it's supposed to be passed down from one generation to the next, all orally, one teacher to a student, that student becomes a teacher himself and then passes it down again. Why did Hashem do that? The Torah Shabbat, Bichsav, the written Torah, that's for everybody. The Torah Shabbat, Peh, obviously we see it comes in a very special way, has to be in that personal relationship because there are many things in the Torah Shabbat, Peh, there are many ideas, there are many concepts, there are many, many intricacies and even fascinating insights into the mysteries of creation that a person that wants to be able to learn that, they have to be privileged to be able to receive it. Who's going to have the privilege of learning and understanding and digesting and absorbing those concepts? Someone that puts himself into the realm of Hashem and His Torah, who's willing to subordinate himself to the will of Hashem, to be able to accept upon himself the deep understandings that the Torah has to teach us, and he has to be on that on that level, in that, in that place, in his own spiritual life, where he's worthy of receiving. It's not for everyone. It's to be received by those that are privileged. That's why the Rambam himself, the Rambam brings down that before a person begins learning the intricacies of Kabbalah, of mysticism, they must spend the first part of their life filling up what he calls the Kresoi, filling up their, their gut, filling up the whole essence with as much Torah as they possibly can. Only then are they privileged to go into the area of Torah that is hidden from the rest of the world. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu is very precious. He's very valuable. You get when you're engaged, so you get a, a diamond ring. Yeah, today is a little different world than it used to be, but in, in the normal times when you get your special jewelry, from your chassin, from your groom, or your husband would buy you something nice for your anniversary, it's special. It's private. It's for you. you even, even many women feel embarrassed a little bit wearing that fancy necklace that their husband bought them for their 25th anniversary full of diamonds. They even want to go wear it to a wedding because everyone's going to look at it. It's private. Those things which are private, those things which are meaningful, those things which are sacred, we keep to ourselves. Again, in today's world, in the world of Facebook, where a woman gets engaged and she posts, as they do, the picture of her diamond ring with 23 carats there just to make everybody else jealous in the world, it's running throughout all of the world. And everybody from one end of the universe to the other is seeing that picture. Her husband buys her diamond earrings. So does the whole world have to see a picture of her ear with a diamond earring hanging from there? Do I really care? Do you really care? No, you don't care. It just makes another person jealous. So that's the world that we live in today, where nothing is private. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is kept to ourselves. But when it comes to Klal Yisrael, and it comes to our appreciation and our understanding of Hashem, we have the following concept. Kvayit Elohim Haster Domar. The honor of Hashem, Hashem's real honor, His real glory, is when I know how to conceal certain aspects of Hashem in this world. Which means the following, it's not our job to go and have discussions about HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the open marketplace where Anybody can hear what we have to say. This is, again, this is one of the dangers, this is the blessing and the curse of the internet. On one hand, you can use the internet to spread Torah. You can po post shiurim, you can post uh, classes, you can have your blog about, you know, your insight into the Parsha this week. Wonderful! On the other hand, who said the Torah was supposed to become so public? Who said that we should run it to the entire world? There was just this big... Uh, this terrible thing, some uh, a certain person who goes around doing kiruv in, in the world 
made a horrible statement that he made a calculation of all of the Jews that died in the times of the Holocaust. And he said, this number 6 million, it's a fallacy. It's not really true. There was really only 1 million to my estimate of the Jews that were killed. And his whole thing was based upon the assimilation rate and the amount of Jews that really weren't Jewish and everything. And he was, basically he's been condemned and by, by the mass of the Torah world for making such a horrible statement. Now why did that happen? Because he posted one of his classes online and it went viral as they say. And within 45 minutes... This man's statements are all around the world and everybody's seeing it and therefore from one end of the world to the other he could be condemned from America to Israel to Europe to Holocaust survivors to everybody. We're supposed to keep HaKadosh Baruch Hu and His Torah and His wisdom. There's something sacred about it. The more that we share, the more that we advertise, the more that we show all of these things, it diminishes, it diminishes the glory of Hashem. That's good. So that's not in this thing. What, what do you mean? You want to share the story of Ashkach Pratis? Yeah. Oh, it's not so right. I'm not on Facebook. No, like, you, you I'm tell a friend. friend. Of course. Yeah, okay, you can... You can use that. You can strengthen them. They'll just like you saw Hashem in your life. They're going to end up meaning, meaning the the situation that you saw in your life, where you saw the hand of Hashem. Maybe it happens to them a hundred times a day, and they never think, "Oh, that's really, that's Hashem." Wow! Now that I look at it like that, you're right. So it just means over here, as he's going to explain right now, and that is that that the more esoteric topics, which is the more spiritually refined ideas that we speak about, they should really only be discussed with people whose minds are striving for a more spiritual life. I can't take the deepest conversations that I have in the Beis Hamidrash inside the house of study, or the deepest insights that I heard into the Torah from one of my Rebbeim, and suddenly I'm going to find a guy off the street who doesn't know anything about Yiddishkeit, about Torah, nothing, and I'm going to tell him over this. It's, it's like giving the diamond ring to a child when all they really want is a lollipop. Because they can't appreciate or value exactly what it is that you're giving them. And that's what he's saying over here. We're not hiding Hashem. You can't hide HaKadosh Baruch from the world. Because... His honor and glory fills up the entire universe in every single nook and cranny and corner. But what we are saying is that when we want to reveal Hashem to this world, so it has to be done in the proper stages, in the proper order. I reveal to the person what I believe that they are capable of understanding. When I was in yeshiva years ago in Eretz Yisrael, so there were basically two to three levels of classes. There was first-year students who just getting their feet wet in the world of Yiddishkeit, and there was second and third year who had already spent a full year, if not longer, sitting and learning Torah, and we were, or we were already the tzaddikim of the yeshiva. So there's a sefer called Nefesh HaChayim. And in that sefer, Nefesh HaChayim, Rav Chaim Velazhenah speaks about the greatest mysteries of creation, including the, the creation of one's neshama, of their soul, how it relates to all of the, this world and the spiritual worlds, how we bring down the bracha of Hashem into the world, and how, God forbid, through the mistakes that we make, we can cause destruction. And it goes on to the power of prayer, and it speaks also about the great energy that the Torah generates here in this world. All fascinating things. So our Rebbe said, I'm giving this shir to the second, third year students, but I don't let the first year students come. Because the knowledge is so deep, and it's so powerful. Unless you have the basics, unless you have the foundations, unless you have a hand already in place properly of your connection to Hashem and His Torah, so these concepts are something that is too deep 
for you to really fathom and be able to appreciate. And therefore, he didn't let the first year boys come to this year. That's what we're saying over you know, We're not hiding Hashem. But the glory of something is how much can it be for those that are privileged, how much can you conceal it? Now that's the honor of Hashem. However, Ukfoid malachim chakor dovar. However, when it comes to the honor of kings, malachim, the honor of kings, then chakor dovar, search out the matter. Meaning what? When it comes to discussions about kings, then you're, you, or you go to explore things publicly, in all details, and you talk openly of the splendor and the accomplishments of the king. Says the Vilna Goy, when it comes to talking about Hashem, Elohim, so we're going to conceal to the best that we can, leaving it for those that are privileged to be able to engage in that study. When it comes to the honor of the Malachim of the kings, Already kings, there's nothing private about a king. A king is in the public eye, a king is running the country, a king has servants and ministers all around him. The king comes through with his, uh, with his procession and there are hundreds if not thousands of people that are flunging into the streets over there to see him. So the king, there's no hiding the king. HaKadosh Baruch Hu can hide himself and conceal himself, but the king cannot. What does this have to do with Shema Yisrael? And Baruch Shem Kevoy Malchuso Le'oilopai. Now there are two aspects of Hashem. And in one aspect, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the Melech Malche HaMalachim, is the king over the entire universe. He's a Melech. And when we call him the Melech, we call him the king, as we pointed out previously, we are being Makabal Ol Malchus Shemayim. We are accepting upon ourselves the yoke of Malchus, of the kingdom of the heaven. HaKadosh Baruch is the king of the heavens and the earth. So when we are saying Shema, we are accepting upon ourselves the old Malchus Shemaim, like we mentioned, Shema, Shin, Mem, Ayin. If you switch those letters backwards, Ayin, Mem, Shin, you have Ayin stands for oil, which is the yoke, Malchus is for the kingdom, and Shemaim is for heaven. So when I say Shema, from forwards and backwards and everything in my life, I'm accepting upon myself the yoke of heaven. On that, we proclaim HaKadosh Baruch Hu out loud, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Why? Because we're accepting upon ourselves the rulership of the king of the entire universe. And this is called Kvoid Malachim, the honor of the kings, which deserves to be publicized for everyone to know about and for everyone to hear. And that's why he wants to bring this beautiful idea. That's why we're saying Shema out loud. However, Baruch Shem Kavoy Malchuso Le'elam Ba'ed. Now we're saying over here in the second, we're saying that the, it's the honor of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we are talking about in this verse over here. And when it comes to speaking about the honor of Hashem, not merely accepting upon myself the kingdom, but I'm now developing my great and intimate relation that I have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu Himself, and that now becomes more refined, more esoteric as we're saying. It becomes something that is more, in a certain way, precious and valuable and sacred between me and Hashem. On that, when I'm going to say those words of Baruch Shem, blessed is the name of Hashem, Kavoid, His honorable name, Malchuso Leoilam Vayed, His kingdom will exist forever and ever. On that now, I do it quietly to myself, between me and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I hope that I'm on an exalted enough level that this that I am portraying with my silent or my quiet recitation of this verse, Baruch Shem Kevoy Malchuzot, that I am worthy and privy myself of having that special, unique and intimate relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if for me, that I don't have to share with, I don't have to share that with anybody else. That's me and Hashem. And just like I'm saying it, you're saying it, 
and she's saying it, and he's saying it, and all across the world there are Yidin, there are Jews that are saying this quietly because each one has their very special private relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Okay, and this is our beginning entrance over here into the understanding of Baruch Shem Kevoid Malchusay Le'olam Va'ed. Now, further, further than that, the uh, Rav Shimshim Pinkus says over a very beautiful idea. It's a mashal, it's a parable, but he says it over the following way. Shema, we said, is a Shema, listen, cloud yourself, recognize who HaKadosh Baruch is, recognize, use it to inspire yourself, to see, look at the world in a different way, see that you're a nation that lives with Hashem, everything that you're doing, Hashem is all around. We're looking at it in that way. Now, my service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu at that point could become very perfunctory. I could recognize myself as a servant of Hashem, I have, I have to serve, I must do whatever He tells me to do, I'm going to do, because that's whatever I accepted on myself, inside of His Torah, I'm going to follow every single thing. That's one way to serve Hashem. There's another way to serve Hashem. And that is not only from the yira, from the fear that one has of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and I feel the pressure on me to always do what He says in His Torah to do, but there is an Ahavas Hashem, a love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that a person can have that raises his level of service of Hashem to a different madrega, to a different stage altogether. And he explains with the following mashal. He says, you have a father and you have a son. And the father calls his son into the room and says, my dear son, I'm very thirsty. Can you do me a favor and bring me a glass of water? And the son says, with pleasure, Abba. And instead of bringing his father a glass of water, so he brings his father a... I've seen this muscle several ways. I'll say it the way that I saw it before this. He brings his father a glass of cold, crisp, sweet and delicious lemonade. And he brings it to his father, and his father smiles, I just asked for water and you bring me the glass of lemonade. The father goes on, and he tells that his son, that he's, you know, a little bit, uh, he's a little bit tired, he'd like to lay down, perhaps he can get his bed ready. So the son goes, and he not only just gets the bed ready, but he prepares the pillows just the way the father likes it. He gets his slippers out, he opens up the covers, and he puts a little, maybe a little cup of water next to the bed, his father's favorite book that he likes to read, and he walks his father to the bed and he says, Here, Abba, everything is prepared for you. He says there is the relationship that a father and a son have, where the, father, where the son must do what the father asks him to do for him. You ask me for a glass of water, I have to bring you a glass of water. You want me to take you to your bed and lay you down? I'll take you to your bed and lay you down. That's all the perfunctory obligation that a son has that he must do for his father's demands. But then there is the ahava, the love, that a son would like to express to his father. And even that which the father doesn't ask for, on that I'm going to take it now to another level and I'm going to give you even more than you were asking for me. Says Rav Pinkis, when it comes to this declaration that we say, the proclamation of my faith in Hashem, that I recognize you are the king of the entire universe, and therefore I recognize everything that you say, Hashem, I'm going to do. You want me to bring you water? I'll bring you water. You want a, you want a bed? I'll get you a bed. You want me to put on tefillin in the morning? I'll put on tefillin. Fine, I'm ready to do everything. But Baruch Shem Kavod, blessed is the name of Hashem. Le'oilavad forever and ever. I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu so much. I want to make sure that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's message and His name and His glory will transfer to the entire universe. How am I going to do that? When I'm serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'ahava with love, and I'm serving Hashem in that way, and I'm showing others how much I'm able to love the Rebbeinah Sha'ilam, 
that itself ends up being the greatest glory for Hashem's name because it's something that will endure and it will last for more generations. We had, uh, last year, I had some relatives that came for a Shabbos. They're not religious, but they're, we'll call it, they're warm to Yiddishkeit. They enjoy Shabbos. They enjoy Yiddish, Yiddish things. So they came for Shabbos and um, they were... They never really had a full Shabbos. They were blown away by the whole Shabbos experience, and the kids singing, and the Divrei Torah, and the food, and they just could, everything. They just couldn't get over it. So late that night, my two oldest sons were sitting up in their room talking, and they the rooms right next to each other, uh, where where my this this couple was staying, where my kids were. So apparently they could hear the conversation going on, and one of my sons starts counting all the brachas that he said that day. Now there's a, there's a concept that we should say a hundred brachas, a hundred blessings every day. So one of my sons started counting up from the morning until the night all the brachas that he said. And he realized that he was missing something like, I don't know, four or five brachas of the one hundred. So my other son says, well, you know what? Let me count up mine as well. And they both realize they're holding in a very similar place. So it's like 11.30 at night. Everybody's already in their bed. So what are we supposed to do? We didn't get 100 brachas. What should we do? So my son says, I have a great idea. We'll go downstairs. She said, we'll, we'll take the cholent. There's three different brachas that we can make on the cholent. And then if that's not enough, we'll eat a fruit also. And then we'll make bracha, we'll get our five extra brachas, we'll do it. So my kids get very excited. They come running down the stairs, 11.30, 12 o'clock at night. They take the cholin pot off of the, off of the crock pot, and now there's ways to do it that you can put it back on, you have to hold on to it, scoop out the food, and then put it back into the cholin pot. And they're downstairs, the kid always looks for a good excuse to eat a little extra cholent on Friday night. They're eating the cholent, then they made the whatever brachas on their fruit, whatever it was. They made the bracha achronas, and they go back upstairs. Unbeknownst to them, this couple was still awake in their room. And they're listening to the entire conversation. And the man tells his wife the following, We also have grandchildren. What are my grandchildren talking about at 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night? They're not talking about how many brachas they made today. They're not getting excited because they're running downstairs to go eat a little bit for the sake of saying more brachas. He says, look at what the Torah does to a child. The Torah makes a child think in his mind about being, bringing more blessings into your life. About getting close to HaKadosh Baruch, even at 12 o'clock when everybody's sleeping. That's what they're thinking about? Unbelievable. So the next day, I didn't know what's going on, but the next day, this man must have told over this story ten times. He could not get over the fact that there are 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 14, 15-year-old children that in their mind, they're thinking about brachos and they're not thinking about who's going to win the playoffs. And what kind of car they're going to get when they turn 16, and who's going to be the next president of the United States of America. That's what they're talking about? This is the glory of Hashem. Quietly, even sometimes, it seems to be secretly. I am bringing glory and honor to HaKadosh Baruch because of the great Ava, the great love that I have of Hashem. I want to make His name glorious here in this world. That is is, says our sages over here, this is what is going to ensure the longevity and the eternity of Torah to Klal Yisrael. It's not only the year that I show publicly how much I could fear Hashem, but it's also my private, special relationship between me and Hashem with the great Ahava, the great love that I have of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that can transfer, that goes inside of myself, and that will transfer to others as well, again, without having to, to publicize, without having to make big videos and all the different things that we do to try to teach what Yiddishkeit is all about. Yiddishkeit is it's real. I have my Rebbe in, in Baltimore, Berkowitz, so I often ask him questions when it comes to 
being involved with Kiruv because the world of Kiruv, of outreach, is changing so rapidly and there's so many bizarre things that people are doing to try to bring people close to the Torah. Nothing to do with Torah. They, they do all these, I, I don't understand it myself, but they do all these wild ideas and different things because that's going to bring a person to a, a uh, Torah-based program by an organization. There's no Torah there at all. And then they eventually hope that they're going to pull them in. And we all know what's going on in the world of Kirov today. Majority of the Jewish people that are being touched by these programs, they might come and they might come back again, but they're not becoming from. Because, as I heard many years ago from Rosenberg Zatzal, the only thing that's going to draw a person close to the Torah is the Torah itself. Gimmicks are not going to work new found ideas and shtick and all this stuff, great, but it's not going to bring a person close to the Torah. So, I once asked for a Berkowitz, I was getting a lot of pressure from, from the young people I was working with, I have to have a Facebook account. you got to go on Facebook, Rabbi, you got to start publicizing your classes, you have to have you know, your list of a thousand, two thousand friends that know who you are, how else are people going to come, how else are people going to know about you? So, I didn't want to go on Facebook. I have no desire to be on that thing. But I said, you know what, I'll ask a shy, I'll ask a question. And I explained to her, Berkowitz, look, look, I live in L.A., all the young guys, college boys, girls, whatever, they say, this is how you communicate today. So he said to me, are you trying to be Makar of the entire world? Is your goal to, to reach every single Jew in the universe and let them become your friends and get them into the door so that you can teach them Torah? I said, no. He said, of course it's not, because that's not how it works. He says, you take individuals, you take families, you take people that you see there's some kind of an interest, and you go one by one, and you begin to be makarb and to bring them closer to the Torah. This is Baruch Shem Kavoyed Malchusay Mayoylam Ba'ed. I don't need to send a Shem out on Facebook. He doesn't have to be, press the link, and boom, you have all the deepest insights into HaKadosh Baruch You don't need that. You need to develop one special private relationship between you and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like a son who loves his father, who's willing to do anything for his father. That's the way that we're going to develop our relationship with Hashem. And this Rav Schwab says very beautifully over here a certain idea, which really brings it all together. He writes that he was once asked, what should a person think about when they say the line, Baruch Shem Kavoyed Malchuso Le'olam Ba'ed, which means, as we're saying, may the name of the glory of His kingdom be Le'olam uh, Ba'ed, may it be forever and ever. And Le'olam also, as we said before, also means hidden. So at the same time that we're praying for the eternal revelation of Hashem's name, we're recognizing there's an aspect of hiddenness that it's supposed to be this private connection to Hashem. So what should a person think about? He said the following. You know what you should think about? You should think to yourself about the Jews that were in the Beis HaMikdash. Because in the Beis HaMikdash, when they said this sentence, Baruch Shem Kevayim Malchus Le'olam Ba'ed, on Yom Kippur, as you pointed out, Mrs. Ben Morris, when they would say this line, what did the Jews do over there? They prostrated themselves completely, subjugating themselves 100% to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Just like we ourselves do on Yom Kippur, during the Avaidah, during the time of the, the service of the, of the Kayin, we also go down on the floor. That's what they would do in the base of English when they would say the words, Baruch Shem Kivayin Malchus Le'olam Va'ed. And therefore the point is the following, he says, that when I'm doing this, I lay myself down, I'm lying on the floor in the Beis HaMikdash, I become part of the Beis HaMikdash itself. And just like the Beis HaMikdash, the temple was the place where it was, was complete, fully dedicated to the service of Hashem, by stretching myself out and bowing down and subjugating myself and becoming one with the Beis HaMikdash, I'm saying, I am the same exact as the Beis HaMikdash. 
just like the Beis Hamikdash is a place filled with the service of Hashem, I'm making my own life someone that is going to dedicate myself and subjugate myself and lower myself from my own fleeting desires in this world to stay focused and with my attention in the right place. I am here merely to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's all that I want to do. So I'm, that's what he's saying over here. I'm giving up my ego. I'm giving up myself. I'm giving up everything. I'm sacrificing, just like in the base of Migdash. Over there they would bring the sacrifices. Sacrifice, we've said many times. The language of sacrifice is a korban. Korban is from the word karev. The karev means to be close. A korban, a sacrifice that a person would bring, would bring them karev, bring them close to Hashem. I'm willing to be makarev, to bring myself closer to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, to everything that I do in, the, in my life. How do I do that? Baruch Shem Kevoid Malchusay Le'olam Va'ed. Just like when the Yidim, when the Jews, when the Beis Hamikdash, they would say this word. That's how they would. That's how they would make themselves totally in line and in tune with the Beis Hamikdash. When I'm saying it myself in the morning or at night, when I say the Shema, that's what I'm thinking. I am prostrating myself before Al Kadosh Baruch Hu, and I am not only willing and able, but with great ahava, with great love and great dedication. I am happy to do everything that HaKadosh Baruch is asking me to do. And this is our proclamation after the Shema. Once that we spoke about Hashem being the Melech, Malchem, Malachim, the King of all kings, the King of the universe, whose king, kingship you can see everywhere that you look in this world, it's all Hashem. So now we're saying that's one way, but there's another way which is my private connection with HaKadosh Baruch not as a king to his servant but rather as a as a God to his as a father to his child and I'm going to show HaKadosh Baruch my great love my great warmth and care about Hashem by doing that which HaKadosh Baruch wants me to do and just to just to conclude with some of these ideas I just want to read to you something that Rav Pincus writes here and that is because this is also along these lines which we're saying that after we said Shema, a person has to realize that the goal of Shema, the goal of living like a Jew is that it's not just for me, but rather it's something that needs to be la'ilam va'ed l'netzach forever and ever. And he says, umiyad, immediately. After we say the Shema, Shema Anu Mispalu, we make, we say, we pray, Baruch Shem Kevoy Malchus Elamber, which is what Sheemes Hazu, that this truth of the Shema, which we said, it totally changes a person's life when they recognize Hashem and they recognize our obligation and we're our service of Hakadosh Baruch in this world, and that I'm part of Klal Yisrael, and that makes me privileged and special and unique. And therefore, I'm, I'm going to live my life today from the moment I say Shema in a whole different way. I don't want it only for myself. I want this knowledge and this understanding of what Shema represents to spread out to the entire world. And first and foremost, it should come and it should be part of who we are. There should not even be one little tiny crevice in our brains that is not totally absorbed in these thoughts of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Like the Sefer HaChinuch writes that by the midst of Amuna, that a person has, a, has an obligation to, to get to know Hashem and think about Hashem, says the thought of the thoughts of Hashem should be so overwhelming that you should be mechashev, you should think about it all day long. Any free moment that you have, any time that you're walking by yourself, you're driving in the car, who says you have to call on the phone all the time when you're driving? Who says you have to listen to the, to the 610 news, whatever, again? You're in traffic, you listen to the traffic five minutes ago, and they're still not moving. So what do you want to hear? Another time you have to listen to the traffic, 
Think about the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam. The more that a person will think about the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, the more they become absorbed in those thoughts, the more recognition and understanding and, and perception they have of Hashem, the deeper one's amuna, the deeper their faith is going to be. Similarly over here, that the more that I recognize what it means to be a Jew, and the more that I absorb these teachings and I absorb this, this great inspiration that the Shema is giving over to me, so then I'm going to be able to make it part of myself, and then I'll be able to transfer it to the whole world. But first and foremost, as he writes, I need to make sure that I myself am someone that is holding dear to these ideas. And he concludes the following. And he says like this, When a Jew sees these ideas and these concepts in a very clear and, and a powerful way, he connects his entire heart to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. His heart gets filled up with love. A, a love that is so infinite because there is no limitation and there is no end to the Creator of the world. If I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is infinite, that means that the love that I could fill up my heart with inside, can also be a never-ending Ahava love that I have of Hashem. And that's what it means, as we're going to see in the next verses, Ve'afde es Hashem alokecha. You have to love Hashem your God, B'chay lovavacha with all of your heart with all of your soul, with all of your means and your abilities and your talents. When the holiness of Hashem is filling up all areas of your life, your heart, your money, your talents, your soul, your abilities, even the things that in your life that you wish could be a little bit better, but when you see it's all Hashem, he ends up reaching a love of Hashem with all of his heart, nafshoi with all of his nefesh, his soul, all of his monetary, physical objects that he has in his possession. This is Shema. By the time that a person finishes saying, Shema Yisrael Hashem, 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 and now they say, Baruch Shem Kivoy Machusay, and they look at themselves, Mamish, like prostrating in the base of English, and I'm now like the base of English myself, I'm becoming one with Hashem, I'm doing His will. I should be filled with such an Ava, such a love of Hashem, that the next words that I say of the Shema, I'm willing now to give over all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my money, all of my possessions, all of my anything that's valued to me. I'm willing to give it all up for HaKadosh Baruch Hu because I realize the more that I fill up these areas of my life with the Kedusha of the Shekhinah, with the holiness of Hashem, the greater is going to be my ability to be close to Hashem, to do what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to do, and eventually, as is the private mission of every single one of us, find ways in our own personal life to spread that glory of Hashem into this world. The glory of the King, and then when I find those people that are, their minds are, are refined enough to appreciate what it is that I'm teaching, then I'll be able to share that with them as well, and bring them, bring them closer. I was just at this banquet last night, and uh, an old chavrus, an old friend and study partner of mine from Yeshiva was honored. And they honored him and his wife because they're such good people, such sweet people, and they believe so much in the Torah that they have been makarv, they were, they've brought people close to Yiddishkeit just being who they are. Because they live a Torah lifestyle. And then once that they find someone that's interested, they're coming for Shabbos, they like the family, they're getting into it, their minds are changing, they show them, they, te- they teach, they learn with them about what it means to be a good wife, what it means to be a good husband, how to raise your children. And then they get them into the basement and they start learning Torah together. So this couple was a really amazing story. This 
one couple that they brought close to the Yiddishkeit, the, the lady, I don't know who she was, she was apparently some TV star, something like that, and the guy was like, you know, must have been along with his wife in this whole adventure, but they brought out the Yiddish neshama inside of them. They brought out the desire that these people have to become frum. They brought out the desire of, of attaining Kedusha and holiness and purity inside of them, and they showed them that just because you're living your life in one way, it's only because you don't realize what life can really be like. And this woman, it seems to me, she left her Hollywood career, she, they're expecting their first child, they moved into the community, they're keeping a Shoma Shabbos lifestyle, they are learning, there's pictures of this guy who never learned Gemara before, sitting in the base midras, learning Gemara together, and they're thanking this couple because they open their eyes to see how beautiful the Torah is and that they are their mentors and their examples in life. This is what we're trying to say. HaKadosh Baruch I recognize you beyond the shadow of the doubt. You're the king of the entire universe. And that obligates me to serve you with all of my heart the best that I can possibly do. But, along with your kingdom is a very intimate relation that I share just me and you. And for that, I subjugate myself completely to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's will in this world. I will absorb and I will engage myself and I will connect myself with great Ahava, great love to Hashem, the best that I possibly can. And then I'm going to be able, because I'm concerned about Hashem's honor and His glory that it should last forever and ever, I will then go and I will share that with the world around me. And to conclude with the words of the Sefer HaChinuch, as he writes about the words of Shema. And he says like this, Ki ha'odam bal what The fact, since that a person is a bal chaymer, they are a physical being. They're very much drawn after this world. Nifta acha havle oilob v'nimshach l'savoysov They are seduced and they are intrigued by the vanities and the emptiness of this world, and they can be drawn after their taivas, after their desires. So what are we supposed to do? Since that we're a Baal Chaymer, we are this physical being, and we are easily drawn after the desires and the foolishness of this world. Therefore, we must have a constant reminder that there is a king in heaven and there's a yoke that is around us. We are commanded to remind ourselves of this twice in a day, once in the morning and once again at night. Because generally speaking, most of the things that we see taking place around us throughout the day, it seems to be the things that are happening in the world, in the global world, in the world of Klal Yisrael, you open up the news and you see what's going on, the Jewish communities are under attack everywhere in America right now, it's horrible what's going on. So it looks like the opposite of what it means, the belief and the trust that we have in our Kodesh Baruch Hu, God forbid. Hashem loves us, Hashem cares about us. Why does a man walk tomorrow the other night in Baltimore and get held up at gunpoint and, and all of his money robbed? Why is a Jew walking through the gates of the old city of Yushalayim and he gets stabbed and he leaves behind him his wife and his seven children? Why is it that in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in somewhere in Germany, so these or, or somewhere in Brussels, or whatever it was, these neo-Nazis come along and they're singing their chants of Hal Hitler, Yemach Shemoy V'Zichel. Why? What? Doesn't HaKadosh Baruch Hu love the Jewish people? Doesn't He care about us? Doesn't He want what's best for us? So we look around the world and we say, this is, this is, this is Hashem? This is the King of the Universe who works on our behalf? Therefore we have to strengthen ourselves. Erev Avoyker, the night time in the morning. But Sarah Shema Yisrael with the declaration of Shema Yisrael. She ain't of Our eyes must be opened. 
lefales or chaysav to weigh out our our actions and our ways, ulechavein sa'odav al piritzadi yizbarach, and that we should direct our paths according to the will of Hashem. This is Shema. Shema Yisrael is, says the Sefer Achinoch, it's the, the super boost that a Jew needs to have in the evening when he goes to sleep, and in the, or at night, even at night during the Marav, and in the daytime when he wakes up in the morning, I must keep my focus straight and pure to recognize no matter what's going on in the world around me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is running the show. I, there's things that seem to be a contradiction to the mercy of Hashem, to the compassion of Hashem, to the love that HaKadosh Baruch Hu claims that for the Jewish people. Don't get sidetracked. The more that I accept the Malchus Shemaim, the kingdom of Hashem, and the more that I develop this personal, private relation between me and HaKadosh Baruch Hu that's filled with Ahava, with love, and I subjugate myself, like Rav Schwab says, to the Beis HaMikdash, that I'm becoming like the Beis HaMikdash myself. I'm channeling everything back towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Then, and only then, will I live in this world that we live in, which is falling apart literally every direction that you turn. I'll be able to stay firm, with great conviction and commitment and dedication to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and His Torah, filled with yira, fear, awe and trepidation, which we must have, but also infused with great ahava, great love of Hashem. Just like the son who brings his father the glass of lemonade, even though the father only asks for water. So I'm going to be the child that brings as much as I can to HaKadosh Baruch Hu when there's so few Jews left in the world that are acting as the children of Hashem. So we have to make it even better than it was before. And in that zechus, in Yetz Hashem, now HaKadosh Baruch Hu bring the ultimate kvod malchus the ultimate honor and the glory of His kingdom and His great name with the coming of Mashiach Tzitkenu, Mimheiro V'yameinu.